But I will try to, to quickly guide you to uh, a very short tour through the port of Constanza because the event is taking place at 5 p.m. Hong Kong time. And uh, Constanza, you know, is a European port, even though it's one of the biggest uh, in the first 20 European ports. Uh, maybe some, uh, some attendees uh, of this event from Asia uh, don't know much about it. So just a quick guide uh, through the port. So basically the port is located at the Black Sea in, uh, in Eastern Europe. And what is uh, interesting about the Black Sea is that it delivers around 25% of the world consume uh, grains. Okay, so one in four kilos of grains are coming from the Black Sea. Um, it's located uh, at the crossroads between Eastern, Central and Southeastern Europe, but it could also, the port could also be uh, thought of as an avant-post for the Caspian region and for Central and uh, Eastern, uh, or for Central Asia and Far East. Well, this is, these are some, some figures about port, the port of Constanza. As you can see, um, every time we reach a peak, there is something going wrong in the world. So basically, this has happened in 8990, and the, block, the communist bloc uh, 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 came, uh, came down in the Eastern Europe. Afterwards, it had, had happened in the 2008 with a financial crisis. And after a long work, we managed last year to reach the historical peak of traffic. And now we have this pandemic crisis. Well, we have over 1,000 companies active in the port of Constanza, uh, most of them working on the uh, solid bulk segment. Uh, of traffic, but we also have liquid containers and general cargo in the port of Constanza. Well, this is the map of port of Constanza, uh, and these are the biggest companies from port of Constanza. For those of you who didn't have the chance to visit or let's uh, do business with uh, with uh, with the port uh, until now. There are two interesting aspects here that I want to highlight. The first one is that if you look in the uh, right in the right corner, you, you will see the Danube River coming directly in the port of Constanza. So basically, this port is the largest Danube port um, that there is. And also, um, you can see that there is plenty of space uh, to develop land to develop inside the port of Constanza. Well, another interesting thing is that if you look closely, you will see that every berth of the port of Constanza is connected with a ra railway. Well, these are general figures about the port. It's, uh, I will not pass through them. Uh, and these are our biggest brands that we have in the port of Constanza. Well, some statistics about the port, as I've told you, uh, we had in 2019 the biggest uh, traffic, uh, but 30% of this traffic came and, and uh, went uh, to and from the Danube River. So the Danube River is very, very important for the port of Constanza. Um, it is important because it connects the port of Constanza with uh, central and eastern uh, main production and consumption uh, centers. Well, the topic for today is very interesting. Um, I think in the short time that I have at my disposal, I could barely scratch uh, this important, uh, these important issues and challenges uh, and future opportunities that we will confront with the port industry. So I, I just want to provoke you to think at two major challenges that we have ahead of us. Okay, so these basically are the hot topics 
of today. Everywhere we can see the, the same thing, we can read the, the same thing. The world as we know it will never be the same. Business will never be the same. Supply chains will never be the same. If you are doing a short Google analysis, you will see that in the last weeks, the most popular keywords associated with COVID and supply chain were flexibility and resilience. Also, if we are looking on the statistics that Drury uh, made public, we could see that the World Container in Index has been dropping from the beginning of uh, January. And also the bunker prices, bunker prices for the two uh, most widely used products are also plummeted. Meanwhile, in South Korea, one of the biggest ships, uh, container ships, had been baptized um, at the beginning of uh, at, at the beginning of May. So, uh, what can we say? What kind of flexibility will bring this ship will bring to the supply chains between Europe and Asia? Will th these supply chains become more resilient as a, as a fact of, uh, of having this, this kind of ships entering in, this, in the trade between uh, Asia and Europe? Well, I think change will not happen so fast as digitization in the rush from, uh, to work from home. So um, I think some things will take some while to change. So I have, uh, let's say, uh, counter the current opinion uh, regarding the change that we will pass through. Um, this, uh, this analogy with a digitization uh, that the company is implemented in the rush to work from home was made on purpose. Uh, because we all uh, heard success stories uh, of activities uh, being digitalized in short periods of time uh, now, uh, while before we're taking months or even years to, to, to implement and they were failures. So this is uh, leading me to the second topic I want to uh, propose for your talk. What is the difference between dig digitization and digital transformation? Um, because I think that uh, by going paperless uh, or by just developing a smarter database, um, we are not getting close to digital transformation. So we have to ask ourselves, what is digital transformation? And I think one way to help, uh, help us getting to this answer is how long it will take digitalization to reach the core of the port business, to reach its mission. Because nowadays, if we are looking closely at the statistics that, uh, official statistics that uh, uh, specialized inst institutions are providing, for example, Untouch released a graph uh, these days showing that we can expect uh, 25, 27% drop in the world's trade for the next month. So I think that even the port business model with the, its main uh, landlord port business model, with, with its main uh, revenue sources of landlord dues and port dues, I think even this port model is put under question. And if we are talking about digitalization, we have to know what can we change to become truly digital? Hmm? This is very, very interesting. And this is a, this is an issue, a hot, hot issue that, that we have on our mind today. How can we link digitalization with the purpose, uh, the purpose of, of uh, our mission here in the port? So basically, this was, uh, this was what I had to do to, to, to speak. Uh, hopefully now I'm, I'm on time. Thank you very much.